Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today we're here to talk about the most surprising reads that I read in 2019. Let's get into it. Now I should preface this with books can surprise you in a good way and they can surprise you in a bad way too. So I've got a real mix here. So let's just dive right in. So the first book that surprised me in a good way is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Now I had read It by Stephen King in the past and didn't really love it. It was fine, but it didn't blow me away. And it was lengthy and all of that. Pet Cemetery is not long. He doesn't go off on tangents. And it's so, um, it's such a layered, wonderful story in the end about grief. Yes, it's horror, but it's so much more than horror. This follows a family that moved to a small town um, and they moved to a house on a very busy street where lots and lots of pets get killed on the street. And um, their neighbor informs the father that you can bury your pet in a certain spot in the pet cemetery and the pet will come back to life. Not quite the same, but it'll come back. And I just thought that this was really, really well written in the end. Like it's made me feel kind of confused about Stephen King because on the one hand, I find his writing too long a lot of the time. Anyway, I think this has inspired me to go and read some of his old stuff. Like I'd really love to read The Shining. Salem's Lot is one of my mom's favorites. In any case, also The Institute does look really good, but that's recent. Um, but yeah, Pet Cemetery actually really surprised me in a great way. Didn't love the movie. It was okay, but nothing too amazing. Another book that surprised me in a bad way was Cop Town by Karen Slaughter. I, I love Karen Slaughter. You guys know, Pretty Girls, I recommend that all the time to not everyone because it's very graphic and violent. Um, but I just thought this was gonna be amazing because Karen Slaughter writes really great, um, very fleshed out characters. And Cop Town is about a town in which someone is going around killing the cops. I think it's in Atlanta and um, the, the cops are incredibly racist, homophobic, misogynistic. And we follow um, two women on the um, police force, tr like trying to stop this cop killer. And in the end, I didn't really care about any of the characters. And I found so many of the characters just so terrible, like truly unbelievably racist and just so immensely flawed and unlikable that it just made me not want to read it. Like I, I didn't feel close enough to any of the characters to, to care. And truthfully, I was like, I didn't really care that there was a killer killing all of these horribly racist and terrible, terrible human beings that just happened to be cops. So I, I didn't really like it. And what I usually love about Karen Slaughter is writes characters that are very developed and you know that there is a backstory about the characters that you're going to be getting information about as well as you go along. Um, yeah, like you have the mystery that you're trying to solve, but you're also trying to dig deep and find out more about the characters. And I just didn't care about any of them here. I think this was her first standalone though. So um, I'm definitely willing to look past it and I'll definitely read more Karen Slaughter because my goodness, I love that woman. Another book that surprised me in a bad way was Growing Things by Paul Tremblay. This is a short story collection by my favorite horror author of all time. And I, I genuinely thought I'm going to love every second of this, every single short story. I'm going to love it all. And I ended up DNFing it. I was so sad. I just, every time I wanted to pick up the book, well, I didn't want to pick it up, which was the problem. But there was just something about about it that I, I just I was 
a bit bored. I wasn't scared at all. And that's what I love about Paul Tremblay is that he writes stories that get gets under your skin. They get under your skin. And it wasn't doing it for me. So I'm wondering if maybe I really like him in novel form and not short story form. I think I have another short story collection of his called In the Meantime, something along those lines. Um, and I'll give it a whirl, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the end I just really like his novels. A book that surprised me in a good way was the Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Now I had read um, In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware before 2019. That's the only thing I'd read by her. And I think I gave it one or two stars. I hated it. I hated it and I, I was so excited at the time because I was about to get married and the whole point of that book was that it was like a, a, a bachelorette or a hen do gone wrong basically. And um, yeah, it didn't work for me. But The Turn of the Key really worked for me. It's a retelling of The Turn of the Screw, which I loved by Henry James. You don't have to have read that to read The Turn of the Key, but I mean, why not? It's so good. So uh, this is about a woman who is writing to a lawyer asking for him to take on her case because she is convicted and she's in jail right now for having killed one of the children that she was nannying. And she's like, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You have to take my case. So she dives into what actually happened to her and these kids. So she took this nannying job in the Scottish Highlands and taking care of these, I think, three kids. And the house itself is this smart home and then things start going wrong and the smart home almost turns against her. And it is eerie and atmospheric and I just I loved it. I hope that she does more retellings because she did it really well and it's made me want to read all of Ruth Ware. I, after this I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway which was fine. It was more mystery than thriller but I, I liked that okay. I think I gave that one three stars but yeah The Turn of the Key amazing. The next book that surprised me in a bad way was Daisy Jones and the Six. Ah! I know everyone right now was going, what do you mean you didn't like Daisy Jones and the Six? Everybody loves Daisy Jones and the Six. And you know, I loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much. I really, really loved that book. And I expected to love Daisy Jones just as much, but in the end, it just felt, it fell really flat to me. I felt like um, a couple of characters were focused on and developed and the rest of them felt really kind of flat, like there weren't more layers to them. Um, and, and this follows a band. I think it's like based on Fleetwood Mac, like loosely. And um, it's a band in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And it's about their drama and it's an interview format. The audio is great. I listened to it on audio, but I just didn't really care all that much about any of the characters. There were a few things that happened in here that felt kind of unrealistic to me. Um, there's a twist at the end. There's always twists in books, but there's a twist at the end that I actually really didn't care for at all. And uh, I just didn't really enjoy any of the characters and didn't feel connected to any of the characters. And like, these are not unlikable characters. You're meant to, um, you're meant to, I think, like them, but I just didn't care about what happened to any of them really. So yeah, I just, I really felt like that missed the mark for me, even though it has done very well. Like Daisy Jones and the Six doesn't need me to like it in order for it to do perfectly well. Cause I think it won the best historical fiction in the Goodreads Choice Awards. Yeah, it did well. Uh, and last but not least, a book that surprised me in a good way was Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Now here's why. I wasn't expecting much when I went into this. 
It's about an unreliable narrator. Sometimes I lie is in the like that's the title of the book. It's about a woman who's in a coma. I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be another one of those. But then it became the most twisty turny thriller I have ever read. It became a thriller where the characters are really developed and you are piecing them together as well as trying to pick apart the mystery at the same time. So many twists and turns. I really, I really can't believe it. If you like a plot driven thriller and if you like a character driven thriller, I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with Sometimes I Lie. I loved it. Surprised me so much. Let me know in the comments below if you read anything this year that really surprised you. Either you were so surprised that you loved it or you were su really surprised that you hated it. Um, I'd love to know what that is for you and I will talk with you soon. Bye guys!